let's go ahead and move on to this work problem. And we're going to be able to apply linear equations to some real live data. Cool beans here. So let's take a look at example number three. So during 2004, Nike's net sales were $12.25 billion. And in 2005, the net sales were $13.74 billion. Write a linear equation. Oh, write a linear equation giving that the net sales y in terms of year x. Then, uh, use your equation to predict the net sales for 2006. So we're going to do two things here. All right? First, we need to write a linear equation. Then we need to use the equation to predict the sales in 2006. All right? So we have two, uh, two tasks there to, to get done there. All right? Um, so let's think about this here just for a little bit before we get cracking here. All right, so we are, we are given a years and then, and then how much money the company made. So that's why it says uh, write it in terms of Y stands for our sales and X stands for our years. So can't we create coordinate points at a certain, at a certain year X? They had a certain value that they made Y, right? And we're actually going to create two coordinate points because it gives us two years and two uh, you know, billions of dollars that they made for their Y value. So let's think about this. How are we going to write for our X value right here? I don't want to use 2004, all right? I mean, I mean, that's a huge, I mean, imagine plotting 2004, right? And then going up to 12.25 billion. So let's make things, things a little simpler. So let's, let's, let's let uh, the year 2000, let's let that be X equals zero. Right, and so that means that if we were at year 2001, x would be one. If we were at year 2002, the next would be two. So in this case, in 2004, I'm going to call this year four. Then, right? I'm going to say just like this pattern over here. We're going to say in 2004, in year four, how much money did these guys make? 12.25 billion dollars. So 12.25 billion, and then we'll put you know, billion at the end, but we're just going to leave this as a decimal. We're not going to put the zeros all right there. And then same thing right here in 2005, or we're going to put in five, they made 13.74. Okay. Well, it says to write a linear equation. Huh. An example two, didn't we learn how to find or how to actually, in example one, we learned how to find the slope between two points. And then in example two, we learned how to write an equation if we're given a slope and a point. So we have to use both examples now in this one. So let's first find my M. Okay, so this would be my X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Okay? Ah, decimals! Don't worry about it, you can do decimals. Come on now, we got our awesome calculator. Do all the work for it. So, uh, Y2 minus Y1, so 13.74, minus 12.25, okay? And that's going to be all over... 5 minus uh, 4. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get my calculator out. So 13.74 minus 12.25. And that's going to give us 1.49. That's what our slope is going to be here. 1.49. And that's all over 1. So our slope then is just simply just going to be 1.49. Okay. So this is going to be our slope, our M. Okay. So we cannot find an equation of a line just giving... A slope, don't we need a slope and a point? Ah, we have two points. So it doesn't matter which point we use, we just need to use one point and we have a slope. So I'm just going to use my first point and this slope. And what formula are we going to use now? Point slope, right? So we're going to use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 to find our equation. If you know a slope, sorry, slope right here. And if you know a point, you can find the equation of that line. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Then I'm going to replace y1 with 12.25. I'm going to replace m with 1.49 and x1 with 4. Okay, so y minus 12.25 equals m 1.49 times x minus my x1 coordinate, 4. Okay. 
So let's see here. Let's go ahead and clean this up first. So we'll leave the left side alone for right now. And let's see, this will be 1.49 times x is just 1.49x keys minus uh, 1.49 times uh, 4. I think it was 5.96. So 5.96. Okay. And lastly, let's just go ahead and add 12 to both sides. So we'll get 1.49x uh, plus, let's, let's do this real quick here, 12.25 minus 5.96. So we'll get 6.29, 6.29. Okay, so this right here satisfies the first part of our equation. What we've done is we have two points, and now we just wrote a linear equation in terms of y is our sales and x is our our year. So that's the first part right here. However, we have a second component of our question. Then use the equation to predict the sales in 2006. If you're if you're like in December in 2005, like, huh, I wonder what our sales will be in December in 2006 at the very end. How much money do you think we can make? What will we plug into our equation? Don't we want to replace X? Because X stands for the years, right? So we want to know what is it in 2006, or we're going to plug in X for 6. And again, this is a prediction. This isn't going to be exact, right? Um, it may be off, but this is going to be a good prediction of what the sales could be. So what you do is that if you want to do the, the second part, you do Y equals then uh, 1.49 times 6. Again, this stands for our year 2006 uh, plus 6.29. All right. So let's see what this is going to give us. 1.49 times 6. So I'm going to add the 6.29. So if this continues on this linear function here, then the Y value, which stands for the sales, will be 15.23. Oh, wait a minute. Let me just put our dollar sign. This is a real life application. 15.24 billion dollars. There it is, and that will conclude this example.